Following the recent survey findings by a research firm InfoTrack on the direction the country is taking and challenges facing Kenya today, we sought to sample what residents of Nairobi felt was the biggest challenge facing the country. And this is what they had to say. The biggest challenge facing Kenya today, I feel, is corruption and lack of vision in our leadership. Um, I think that cannot be overstated given how we see our leaders are just focused on uh, elections, MPs want to add, to add themselves salaries, MCAs want to add. So I feel like we are a generally very selfish generation. The biggest challenge um, we are facing as a country is um, an unemployment because mostly um, uh, youth even um, uh, in, the, in the streets, uh, everyone, everywhere, people are just disappointed. Biggest challenge in Kenya, corruption. Corruption. Uh, I can talk of most of our leaders. They have turned the government into a, a looting jungle. Uh, we have the cases of corruption. Na fikiria serikali haijajukumika sana kwa kuangalia hali ya maisha ya mwananchi wa kawaida. Sisi kama wananchi ambao tuko chini eh, tulikuwa tunatarajia na tulikuwa na matumaini makubwa sana mm, kwa sababu tulitarajia kwamba serikali itakuja kuinua hali ya maisha ya mwananchi wa kawaida uh, kama mkazi wa Mombasa yani Maisha tuwaona ya magumu sana yani kulinganisha na miaka ya nyuma mpaka sahi maisha ya magumu sana. The less fortunate in the society do not have the opportunity to explore to their problems. For example, in, um, in our country currently, those who, who have big posts in the country and those who are uh, rich, let me say so, rich, have the opportunity in the country to explore and do everything not unlike the people who are less fortunate in the society tumekuwa na shida ya hapa na pale ya utovu wa usalama tumeshuhudia uh, uh, watu wakiakuwa uh, abducted na kuuawa na vifo vya vijana kuuana moja kwa mwingine Let's go to matters of education now, where the homeschooling community has filed a petition at the High Court seeking an interpretation of the Basic Education Act. In the last two years, five parents have been arrested for failing to enroll their children in formal schools, instead educating them at home. NTV's education reporter Sharon Baranga spoke to a homeschooling proponent to understand how it works. Same printing press. Those dots are a lot Cassandra Daggett smaller. is taking her four sons through a reading class at the comfort of their home. The market has showed us. Her children now know the routine, which involves having breakfast by 7 a.m. before studying commences. If it's a chilly morning, we wrap up in a blanket to make it nice and cozy and loving, and that's when we start our morning time. That's when we do the things that um, all the children do. So that's when we do our memory work. We chose to start homeschooling because I wanted to be able to give each of my children an education that was focused on them, that was tailored specifically to them. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of my children really struggles to read, actually has a learning disability. And so being able to nurture that and encourage that while remediating her in reading, um, she's now actually reading above her grade level. None of her six children have been enrolled in a formal school. She is their full-time teacher. I think the misconception is often that homeschoolers are opposed to traditional schools. And I think the opposite is actually true in most cases. And it is that as homeschoolers, we value education. And we all think that homeschool or education is so important to a community. Mm -hmm. And so traditional schools are a vital part of that. They are so important. And homeschooling isn't the right choice for everyone. Recent arrests of some parents homeschooling their children has left the community feeling threatened. I just believe they come from a single common answer. On February 18th, Silas Were was arrested together with his children in Malava, Kakamega County. Were was charged with negligence because his children were not attending school. The community now wants homeschooling legalized as a viable alternative form of education.
When the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was promulgated, basic education was recognized as mandatory and it became necessary for legislation to safeguard it. This meant that every parent should ensure their child attends school regularly. The parents say Section 4 of the Basic Education Act offers guidelines of what basic education entails and should be recognized along with Section 31.3 which provides that a parent or guardian shall have the right to participate in the character development of his or her child. The law enforcement uh, authorities are looking at homeschooling through a very rigid lens and the law is not very elaborate in terms of where homeschooling lies. And so we are seeking an opportunity to have that clarified. The homeschooling petition is not, it's not um, a move against the government. It is actually, it's actually an effort to have um, the education sector um, include homeschooling as one of the legitimate methods. The homeschooling petition was filed on 17th June and certified as urgent. It was then mentioned on 25th June when the respondents requested for 21 days to file their response and submissions. That's why we have this the next hearing will be in September and like many parents who school their children at home, Cassandra is hopeful that the court's decision will be in their favor. And pick a page to Sharon Baranga, NTV. Very interesting story there by Sharon Baranga. Would this homeschooling concept for you, would, would it have worked for you? No, I didn't have the discipline. My mom would try and wake me up and then I'd go like, uh, just give me a few more minutes to finish praying. That was my snooze button before snooze buttons <laughs> became a thing. Well, she said there it is nice and cozy. There's a blanket there. It's very comfortable. Yeah, I saw that. Nice and cozy for some of us or something else. It's slippers and uh, other things. It was all education. Would you have sat still? <laughs> no. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Well, the Kenyan University Staff Union have appealed to the Education Cabinet Secretary, Professor George Magoha, to quickly consider and convene an urgent stakeholders meeting that will come up with a way forward in confronting challenges facing public universities. The union has rejected the proposal by the government to employ workers strictly on contract terms. We are saying call the stakeholders. We'll come up with views. Whether we'll say, yes, go ahead and close one or two or three, the stakeholders are the ones who can then say, do that. And I'm sure they'll give reasons as to why that should be done. But not the vice, I mean, the, the uh, cabinet secretary sitting in Jogo House and spewing decrees <laughs> as if this country does not have, is not governed by, by, by laws. No, it's not right. Coming up. On the other end of this short break, Eunice Omolo takes us to Samburu where the men have put down their spears for feeding bottles. Don't touch that remote.
mothers. Our journey walked alone most of the time, especially in pastoral communities. The path is now slowly taking a turn as men in Samburu County are becoming actively involved in reproductive and maternal health teachings that were once seen as a taboo and a feminine affair and disseminating the knowledge to their pregnant women and wives. Eunice Omolo reports on the changing tides in NTV's Womb Warriors. Samoro County, set in the rolling plains, covered in a natural carpet of greenery. A long spread of freshness upon the ground, a fresh start after an unexpected downpour. The green fields, lush and wild, like a jungle with all the trees, full of promise and hope. Pastoral farming is the main economic activity in the area, and the rains have rejuvenated the fields, providing the perfect spot for the community's custodians of the flocks and heads. Men and young boys tasked are out carrying out this old age duty. In this community, gender has for a long time demarcated what is to be of the man folk and what responsibility is shouldered by the women and the lines of division of labor are clearly marked and rarely crossed. Pregnancy, maternal and reproductive health tasks have been laid on the shoulders of the women folk for a long time now. On the surface here in Samburu North Marti area, under the alluring green landscape, the shades of the trees and on the grass, men, young and old from both the Turkana and Samburu communities gather in their tents, charting a new path, a path that will change the face of sexual reproductive health in Samburu County. <laughs> Among them, Keshi Leodip, a middle-aged man is eager to share his story with his peers. His is a tale that begins with the hope of new life and ends in tragedy. He remembers vividly the darkest night of his life. When he lost his second wife and their last-born child during childbirth. It was as if his dreams had bled out right there on the floor with his wife. Everything he hoped his life with his wife, a newborn, all that he loved and all the memories they would have made together in the world was all gone. All snuffed out by lack of emergency care that would have saved her life. But his loss hasn't been in vain. He uses his ordeal to try and break the stereotypes that have for long held his community in gender encased boxes. Well, I'm not sure if you're a 
like that. These support groups formed by men for men to learn and to be trained on maternal health care, pregnancy related issues, child immunization and reproductive health. Many like Leodip have come to find closure, the loss of a wife or an infant. Death during childbirth was also not kind to George Ewaton, the Marty area chief and a father of seven. Death ripped off a part of him he had eagerly waited for. His mind called an empty two years on after losing his son to what he attributes to be due to childbirth complications arising from poor diet and lack of antenatal care for his wife. Inafaa kuangaliwa pia kia, kia chakula, apate ilishe vizuri, na pia audhurie clinic regularly vile inatakekana. Kwa hivyo, ikiwa sisi tulijunga na hii, tulikuwa na tulipata elimu. Iyo elimu tukarudishe nyumbani. Sasa tuliagisa kena mama ambawa wajawazito, watembelea clinic. Kila mara wanapo itajika na tunakuja pamoja nao. Kwa hii sasa ajusi vile alijufungua, ata haja umana kwa maza. Iyo tu imetokea wa haita hije fika wana hawa. Just kitu kama 30 minutes na akajifungua. Despite taking his wife to deliver the health facility, the vastness of the area and distance from the nearby facility to a referral hospital delayed care for his wife. Mama aliumana kwa muda. Madagatari wakijaribu kuitana ambulance kuja usaidia lakini yukwati hiyo na fikiri kulukua na matatiso za usafiri za ambulance. Sasa walijaribu, walijaribu, mama kajifungulia hospitali akiwa na shida hizo mtoto amekuwa mama amekuwa mnyonge akiumana kwa siku tatu mtoto naye kusaliwa hakuweza kuishi kwa sababu ya hiyo ukosa wa huduma muhimu ambayo ilikuwa inatakikana our community still deliver at home so we still need to be policies to be put in place that mothers should not be delivering at home Years back, women would deliver at home due to lack of transport to the facilities for safe delivery. The narrative is slowly changing. Our county, in cooperation with our development partners, one, with both ambulances. At the moment, we have almost 11 ambulances which are working across the county. In Samburu East at the Wamba Hospital, this scene is slowly becoming a familiar picture outside maternity wards in Samburu County. Shaptal Lekireu is expecting his first child with his wife. He has been waiting outside the health facility for the last two hours as his wife labors. Unlike other husbands from this area, he has decided to accompany his wife to this delivery. <laughs> The couple is a beneficiary of a transport voucher initiative aimed at facilitating transport for pregnant mothers to the hospital. Through the voucher, expectant women are able to get ambulances on their due date to enable them to get to the health facility for delivery on time. Yes. 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 Yes.
amu keeta naa ntoki supat duake naidim ake nisaidia iltung'anak pooki amu duake ntoki napuoi ake ayau iltung'anak nota nkang' naa iyie ake iputu naa duake tolum shida nijo naa kutuna wata naa keeta ntoki naisaidia iyie oleng nikintoki aitabaiki duake iltung'anak. Registration is done through the mobile phone. Likire who registered his wife in the program. Yeko rapa pa kalto register pa namona nte na rapa nga sa ako na banam sito na may ata parin yee simu ni katay niki register na pa kaila inila yaman na na ini na may ano ni simu na ito ng rapa number ina na register ni na may ata bang kapande. They are enrolled and they are given a code. When the labor starts, that mama can just call the driver of the ambulance. The driver of the ambulance. Keys the code, the the four letter code into the till, and the, it's it's immediately reflected in the system, and in her phone she receives three thousand Kenya shillings, and immediately the driver rushes there, picks her, brings her to the health facility, she's attended, and after being attended by a skilled healthcare healthcare giver, she goes back to, she's taken back home. Kazi yangu, tayi ne iko na shangamoto kati wa uziku. Sawa pia madi madi ile mimi naishi ni mbali kidogo. Sasa na pia unaweza kuta ni, ni kati ya mvua ndio unapigwa zimu na ni usiku sana. Sasa na na ni nangangana sana kuja hata pia kutoma sana na usiku saa tisa na na ninaenda na, 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 mali mbali sana kutoma suari dengarde ngelai na pia unakuta huyo mama ameshindwa kunini kujifungua. Sasa mpaka alitu and wafanyio CS. Sasa na inabidi tu ni eh? While this transport system has seen more mothers come to deliver in a health facility, the rise in numbers of those seeking services hasn't been met with a corresponding increase in health workers deployed here. Here you can get 10 deliveries, 7 deliveries in a day. And she's not only in, 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 in labor, she's also in nursery, she's also in taking patients for the, those ones who are going for CS. She's also having the mothers who are sick, so it is a, a, a big uh, workload. The journey of pregnancy and children welfare has often been taken by mothers alone. Babies milestones mostly matricentric. For George Elliman, their third pregnancy is not a gamble. Every deal is key to ensuring they ace in all the stages in their pregnancy. The wife is due in three weeks' time. Hapo kitamba tukwa tunajua kwa mba usiana mama na baba pia ni kitungine muhimu sana. Na bidi wa elewane, wa fainiane, ndo kusudi wa wakue kwa wapatane kwa mafikiano fulani. So ni maana hiyo kitu ni muhimu sana kwa sababu imeweza kutusaidia. Due to leaning on culture and distance from health facilities, a number of women had put their lives on the line under the care of traditional bath attendants. Eleman's wife was not exception. Una kwa naenda clinic. Sasa mara kidogo tu nasikia mgonjwa pale fulani, mara kidogo mgonjwa pale fulani, mara kidogo mgonjwa pale fulani. Na mwenye anakuja kututibu, yeye sio mtu akuuliza unaona wapi. Mara unakuja unakuta anaganda mtu anamganda zaidi. Anamvinya sana, anamumisa kabisa. So napata kuona kwa mba hata ya nabaki kama anamumia. Kita mba wanda kawaende, unakuta mba mela siku tatu nene. Na ili mita napatiwa tena, nakuja mba kani mzuru daka kidogo nakuta natapika. Mara kidogo nakuta naendesha. Sasa unashinda kuelewa juisi kama wakama wazetu nakaa kanda juisi kuingilia mba kinama ndi wanafanya kitu kama yo. So ni kuona tu majibu hawa, mmasa kasi hawa naenda. O nabaki hapo kungana matapika, nabaki hapo kungana mbwengine mingi. Wao kia wameenda. Unakuta wakatile wakatile ya kitambo wakati watu tulikuwa tunashugulika na mamba ya kitambo wamba nyumbani ya tukua nusika na hospitali Maisha watoto asa asa wakati ya nazaliwa inakuwa ni atari kwa sababu asa wakati mtoto nazaliwa Unakuta hata unakuta hata wakati mtoto nazaliwa mwenye nazalisha ule mtoto mamba usavi ya kuna Hata kama ni mambo hile ya mtoto agizaliwa kama mamba wakata kile ambiliko wa kodi Hakuna hata hile vitu ambayo siku sterile So tena unakuta mambu mingi hata kama mtu anesakuwa mgonjo anesambuisa pia mtoto So unawana wakati yosa vitu mingi ilikuwa ni nini ilikuwa inatuletea mshangamoto sana Lakini wakati tulikuja kufawamu kwa mba kuna njia nzuri ambayo inatasuaidia Especially mambo yasa kuenda usibitali kuenda mamba mwa klinik So imetufanya sana tuwe huru 
na kitu ya pili tena hapo kitambo watu walikuwa nalipa hospitali so pia hiyo kakuwa ni kitu kingine ambayo inafanya watu wengi wakosa kwenda kujishughulika na hospitali kulingana na uwezo ya mtu so ukisikia hospitali nalipo inafanywa nini so what you do you do you do, you do away with it unaamua tu ukaa nyumbani kufanya tu washa iliwe liwalo elements first two children were delivered at home wakati wa alizaliwa nyumbani hatukuwa na pesa ya kulipa maternity so ilibidi tu asalie nyumbani jukumbeleka maternity lazima utaimbo ulipe na kama una uwezo usitabidi urudishe nyumbani hiyo ndio sababu hasa ilifanya asalie nyumbani ndio na sasa yule ambaye mama kwa mjamzito tuko na uhakika kwamba hospitali haidipi matani tuko free kwa hiyo sasa yeye anaenda kama kawaida Delayed or lack of skilled birth deliveries contributes to an increase in maternal deaths in the country. Health statistics in the country shows that an estimated 6,000 to 8,000 pregnant women and new mothers die every year due to childbirth and pregnancy complications. <laughs> The men here are now becoming more alert and watchful as they try to reverse these statistics, at least in this corner of the country. Mama anapo pata mimba, kwa hivyo ni kama tu hata musee amepata mimba. Kuna nami na ambaye tulifundishwa, wasee wakaya karibu na kina mama. Mama, musee wakaya karibu na mama, angalie eh, shida yeyote eh, katika hiyo ali ya eh, mimba hiyo. Angalia chida na endelea mzuri, hakuna damu natoka, haumani um, kabila mwezi sake, eh, anakula na mnagani, na hata ninapungusia mzigo, eh, ninapungusia hata kufanya mapenzi na yeye, wakati hako na eh, jamusito. According to the Kenya Demographic and Health Survey of 2014, about 58% of pregnant women complete all four antenatal care visits. Of the women assessed, less than 10% were recorded to have made at least four ANC visits. This poses a danger to the mother and the unborn child. These focus groups highlight on the importance of making such visits for the mothers. Samburu society is a patriarchal society. And for Samburu men, Reproductive issues are normally seen as if it is feminine issues. So at the moment we've seen great improvement because our men are now escorting their women to the clinics. And when they escort, they are given first priority by our health workers. So that mama, that mama who, is attended, who is escorted by the husband is given first priority. She cannot line, she cannot queue in the facility. So it is a great improvement. Tulipata elimu. Iyo elimu tukarudishe nyumbani. Mm -hmm. Sasa tuliagisa kena mama ambao wa wajawazito mm -hmm. watembelea clinic. Mm -hmm. Kila mara wanapo itajika. Na tunakuja pamoja na hawa. Mm -hmm. Another thing that has helped them, our partners, Usasi Salama, have come up with talking radios. Now they get health messages at their homes. Yeah, where they are told the importance of delivering in the hospitals. So and we've seen great improvement. In the year 2016, we had 2,000 women. In the year 2017, it's 4,000. So it's it's a great improvement. Yeah. Yani kumwa kamoja unapata kwa sawili. Ivo. Ni mbaya. Tumefunzwa. Tutumie. Kitu kama iki. Lessons these womb warriors learn do not end in protecting their wife's pregnancy and their self-delivery. Easy. Tumesema. They are also equipped with the knowledge on family planning. Nakana kare. Utoona aliwe. Toto wangu wa kwanza watatu wenye walisaliwa eh, inje ya sibitali eh, wanafuatana karibu karibu na hao wenye walisaliwa eh, inje ya sibitali enyewe walikuwa na na matatizo hata ya kukua au kwa wanapata eh, malicho mazuri Previously this was purely a women's affair and some had to do it behind their husband's backs It was a concealed contraceptive of sort the punishment for being caught was dire for the women Samani kulikuwa na mambo ya kusema eh Mama kama hajapeana ilikuwa ni mama ndiyo natangulia hospitali. 
na anachukua shabai ya family planning. Mm. Sasa akiana nyumbani inakuwa kikwazo kwa bwanake. Mm. Ya kwamba wewe sasa umekuwa tasa. Mm. Kwa hivyo inaonekana kuna kitu sasa inatingiza kabisa mambo ya afya ya mama na inatingiza mawaso ya mama. Mm. Hata mbeleni huko anataka kuona ile vitu tumeonyesha hapo leo. Mm wakiona wanasema pasua na utupe na sasa singine wanakimbia wanasema unaletea unajaribu kuwafundisha aibu na unaona leo wame wamekuwa machoja wanaangalia na wanauliza maswali <laughs> kwa hivyo elimu inabalisha nini inabalisha mawazo etengero robo Now the scenario is changing and the men here are not letting their guard down matters family planning and spacing nikajua hata masiku samwesi ambaye mama anaweza eh, kupanga usasi hata mafundisho hiyo ilipokuja ilipata watu wote hata mama kwangu alianza kuwa wasi na mimi na mimi nikakaa wasi tukaanza kujua eh, tunapokuja seminar tukienda nyumbani tukajua hii eh, ni ukweli hata tukawa tunafumuliana kwa sababu mbeleni mimi nilikuwa na fikiri pengine hata mama akisema leo ni, ni wakati ya ya mwezi mimi siko anajua nikasema mama ananidanganya and the change in attitude couldn't have come at a more opportune time the high poverty levels and the current famine in this area make it that much harder to get for a large family kwa sababu niliona hata katika familia yangu inapunguza umasikini inasaidia kwa kusomesha watoto kwa sababu watoto wanapoenda chule ya upili wako na nafasi na kuna faida mingi ambayo tunajaribu ukijifunza kutoka hapa utafikisha kwa familia labda mama hakuweko kwa mafundisho wewe utapeana ile habari umeona umefaidika naye kwa hospitali sisi tulikuwa tunafikiria hapo awali mama akipata hizo madawa inaweza kukata usasi e, ama mama atachelewa e, kupata mimba na Pengine mimi nitajishuku kama nimekata kosa ama mama atapata mpango ya kando. The tide of change that is sweeping across the plains of Samburu may not be very strong but it is enough to begin the process of changing the narratives of families here of breaking down the gender barriers and bringing in the strongest members of the community to help in perhaps the hardest and most delicate task of ensuring the healthy continuity of the community. Tukiangalia sasa upande wa utamaduni, wanasema tufuate utamaduni, lakini jaribu angalia umuhimu wa utamaduni hakuna. Hakuna usaidizi na kupea, hakuna masomo na kupea. Ile ni mambo ya kitambo, hakuna kitu na kusaidia. Ndio sababu tumeamua kuachana naye. Father's involvement in maternal and reproductive health is slowly becoming a game changer in reducing maternal and infant mortality. The rays of hope for safer and better maternal care are beaming brighter. Yunisomolo and TV from Samburu County. Yunus Omolo looking rather fetching in that regalia. The hashtag womb warriors. I've gotten a few of your views. J10 says it's quite heartwarming when we as men take the forefront position in protecting our ladies to deliver uh, safely. Kudos to them. James Ndongo Njau says uh, womb warriors is a wonderful documentary showing the challenges facing most remote parts of the country and how men are rising to the challenge. Samburu is just one among many. It is hard, though, to believe that people still choose to deliver at home. 
Matilda says, when we conducted What Women Want campaign, we found that the lack of transport is a major challenge to pregnant mothers when in labor, something that contributes to them giving birth at home. I admire the womb warriors who ensure their wives are constantly visiting clinics. We also have Governor the Dreamer. He says, nobody ever becomes an expert parent, but I think good parenting is about consistency. It's about being there at the big moments, but it's also just the consistency of decision making and it is routine. You can still send through your views. The hashtag, as I said, is Womb Warriors. We take a break. Sudanese protesters are back on the streets. Details at the tail end of this break.
Welcome back to NTV tonight. And uh, tens of thousands of protesters rallied across Sudan against the ruling generals as organizers called for a march on the presidential palace in Khartoum in the biggest mass demonstration since a deadly crackdown on demonstrators. The march is seen as a test for protest organizers whose push for civilian rule has been hit by the June 3rd raid on a Khartoum sit-in and a subsequent internet blackout that has curbed their ability to mobilize support. Dozens of demonstrators were killed and hundreds wounded when armed men in military fatigues stormed the city outside army headquarters, shooting and beating protesters who had camped there since April 6th. A protester was shot dead at a march in Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo as police dispersed hundreds of anti-government protesters. Police say the man was shot at a banned march in Goma in the, in the east to mark the 59th anniversary of the Central African country's independence from Belgium. Policeman was also wounded in the unrest as some of the protesters were armed. Time now to look at what you're expecting this coming week and this coming month. The new financial year 2019-2020 will start at the stroke of midnight as we step into a new month of 1st of July. The fiscal year or the budget year is generally used for accounting and budget purposes and it varies between countries. Sharp focus will be on the division of revenue stalemate with talks expected to continue this week. South Sudan President Salva Kiir is expected to jet into the country tomorrow for a two-day official state visit. President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to receive him at State House, Nairobi. The two leaders will hold bilateral talks and a joint press briefing will follow. A Dutch healthcare business delegation of about 22 companies will be visiting Nairobi from tomorrow in search of partnerships and investment opportunities in the Kenyan health sector that some of the things that you expect this coming week it's that time now when we bring you click worthy stories from around the world and tonight we start a couple of kilometers from the nation center and that is one mombasa road where a multitude was captured in photos and videos gathered for job interviews <laughs> Rumor was that Eka Hotel had advertised a handful of vacancies for waiters and waitresses. However, the hotel has clarified that it was a recruitment agency conducting the interviews. Well, the overwhelming turnout indeed illustrates how serious unemployment is among the youth in the country. Very, very sad situation. And speaking of the youth, are you familiar with the Nobel Prize winning writer Wallace Oyinka? Mm -hmm. Not ringing any bells? Well, he's the guy who threatened to ban his green card if Donald Trump was elected president. I'm not sure he did. And this past week, he was back in the news. One Tonya Patrick call sharing on social media how Soyinka was, in quote, disrespected on a flight by a younger passenger. Apparently, Soyinka had sat in his assigned window seat. Cole was of the opinion that the man should have allowed Soyinka as his elder to keep the seat instead of insisting that he occupy his designated aisle seat. People still fight over these things, but Eshima Kwawaze. I read the post actually that uh, Tony posted on his social media account and he described the young man most interestingly. He called him uh, Bobo Fine. Bobo Fine. <laughs> <laughs> It must be pigeon, I'm assuming. Yeah. And that, of course, he said was on account of his cap and his T-shirt and apparently had tattooed biceps. Mm -hmm. And speaking of power-packed muscle, police in the States have had a very busy week with trapped bears. The first reported incident taking place in Mizola, Montana, where this black bear locked itself in a room at a home and refused to leave. <laughs>
very good evening to you. Hoping your weekend was fantastic. Let's get into the world of sport, where Madagascar produced the biggest shock so far at the Africa Cup of Nations as they beat three-time winners Nigeria 2-0 to qualify for the round of 16. Madagascar are ranked 108. <laughs> Where we actually talked about Madagascar being one of the teams to watch. Let's move on and Harambe Stars will be seeking to carry momentum from the 3-2 win over Tanzania when they play the wounded Taranga Lions of Senegal in their final Group C tie. And as Brian O'Twell reports, both teams will be gunning for a positive result that will improve their chances of qualifying for the next round at the Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt. Afcon 2019 in association with Go TV. A win to guarantee second place or a draw to confirm qualification as one of the four third placed best losers is what Arambe Stars will be going for. And Stars coach Sebastian Minier believes the pressure is on their opponent Senegal as the two teams face off in their final Group C clash at the 30 June Stadium in Cairo, Egypt. They are number one in Africa. There are so many qualities, not only physically. We have maybe one of the best players in the year this season with Sadio Mane. So, uh, we know it would be difficult, but uh, to be able to compete against this kind of team and uh, we have nothing to lose tomorrow. It's only a pleasure. Kenya and Senegal are tied on three points with Taranga Lions on a better goal difference. Already with two goals to his name, making him the all-time top scorer for Kenya at an AFCON, Japan-based striker Michael Olunga as well as Bruges midfielder Joano Molo will be hoping their 3-2 win over Tanzania will be a motivator to pull in a surprise against Senegal. Our motivation is really like to try to, to write something in uh, Kenyan football and uh, also playing against a team like uh, Senegal, it's a, it's a privilege and we are so excited to, to take them on. Kenya had the best defensive record during the qualifiers but that has since been shaky with Stars conceding four goals so far, something coach Minye is urgently seeking an answer to. It's a team problem. Know, to find the good balance, uh, all to defend, all together at the same time. We work on it. Not enough visibly since two games, but the level is not the same also. The team will be boosted by the return of Gormahia's Joash Onyango, who has since recovered from an injury, with Philemon Otieno, who missed the East African derby against Tanzania, also available for selection. I don't have all the answers, uh, but I expect uh, to give our best and uh, what is important for my team, not forget uh, without the team spirit, it will be difficult to, go, to challenge uh, Senegal. Senegal only need a draw to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations knockout rounds, but coach Aliou Sisse believes they will be good enough to claim victory in Cairo. Liverpool's Sadio Mane is yet to make an impact having only played once against Algeria after missing the opener due to suspension. We have no choice. We have to beat Kenya. We have to beat Kenya in order to stay here. In the group's other tie already qualified Algeria who won the battle against tournament favourite Senegal will play Tanzania at the Cairo Stadium. Both matches kick off concurrently on Monday at 10pm East African time. The last time Kenya played Senegal, the Stars went down 3-0. Fast forward, a different coach, different players, an all-new setup. A challenge Harambe Stars players are taking with pride and in stride as they seek a win and rewrite history. Brian O'Toole reporting from Cairo, Egypt.
AFCON 2019 in association with GoTV. Experience the unforgettable with the Total Africa Cup of Nations with Supersport on GoTV. GoTV, live it, love it. All the best there to the Harambe Stars. Thanks for that, Brian, in Cairo. Let's move on to some athletics, where Olympic gold medalist Faith Kipiegon will be back on the track tonight after a two-year hiatus in the women's 1,500 meters at the Prefontaine Classic Meet in Eugene, Oregon. The 25-year-old, who was on a maternity break, will renew her rivalry with IAAF Diamond League winner Laura Muir and reigning world number one Shelby Hulihan. Kipiegon's 2016 time of 3 minutes 56.41 seconds in Oregon is still the fastest ever recorded on U.S. soil. Kenya will also be represented in the 1500 meters by Winnie Chibet, who is the African Championships gold medalist. Casta Semenya also returns to the 800 meters with the athletics world wondering if it, if it may well be her last race over the distance. The Prefontaine Classic is the seventh stop on the Diamond League circuit. Good luck to Faith Kipiegan there. Well, we do have lots lined up in terms of the Copa America, much more in terms of a very special day for Victor Wanyama as well. All that and more after the break.
Well, let's move on. Welcome back to the Copa America, where Luis Suarez had a night to forget during Uruguay's Copa America quarterfinal face-off with Peru. Not only was his goal ruled out for offside during regular time, but he missed the only penalty as Uruguay were beaten in a shootout that saw Peru advance to the semis. Brazil. and Uruguay. But moving on, and national team captain Victor Wanyama is set to play in the biggest game of his international career on Monday when the Harambe Stars take on the Taranga Lions of Senegal in the Africa Cup of Nations. But the spotlight on the Tottenham man's club career also shown on this day five years ago when he signed for Scottish club Celtic FC from Belgium's Beershot AC for £900,000. It's more grew to whip it in. <laughs> While you are away, yes. I had people passing in front of the <laughs> camera. 
<laughs> and crazy things happening. So my name is Dennis Sokari, <laughs> and I want to hand it over to you just oh, in case something in happens. Case I, no, nothing will happen. <laughs> my name is Olive Burrows, and Flora Atieno has been our sign language interpreter. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.